OpenAI has just announced that they have launched their at GPT feature. So essentially what this is doing is allowing you to tag different GPTs in a chat GPT conversation. Now, this is a really interesting new feature. Um, since the GPT store was unveiled a number of weeks ago, over 1 million GPTs have been created. And these are things that, you know, these AI tools are really good for, um, you know, if someone's come up with a really good prompt and they figure out how to do something specific, like that's one side of it. But the side of these GPTs that I'm a lot more excited about is the ones where people upload their own data sets, you know, their own, maybe they have access to a data set or they've gathered something that others don't have. And they're able to create these GPTs that are built off of something specific. And Sam Altman himself, this is essentially the use case he showed when he unveiled this on stage, it took him a couple minutes and he essentially created a GPT, which was all of his um, speeches and a bunch of talks that he'd given, threw them in there, uploaded them, and then had it, you know, create a GPT essentially from him giving his advice to founders. That was kind of his GPT. So what's really exciting is, of course, those were cool. You could use those and, and use those for different projects. But now what you're able to do with chat GPT is talk to multiple of these. And essentially, you're just going to be able to put the at symbol, write the name of the GPT and call them. And so OpenAI put a, put a post out on LinkedIn and they said, and I reposted this, they said, you can now bring GPTs into any conversation in chat GPT, simply type the at symbol and select the GPT. This allows you to add relevant GPTs with the full context of the conversation. Okay, so along with this, they had a little graphic showing essentially what it is, is right in the chat bar, there's an at symbol, you click that or you can type the at symbol and it's gonna pop up um, a bunch of recent, your recent and your pin GPTs that you use, but you can also search GPTs right there. And this is gonna be amazing for doing like multi-step stuff. And really what they're trying to do is create like this all-in-one place for an assistant to exist. So what I think is really impressive about all of this um, is the ability that you're gonna have to really take some of your prompting and some of your projects to the next level. So I wanna talk about a funny example that I've seen out on the internet from a journalist using this, and then maybe talk about some other examples that I think we can use. But essentially um, over on The Decoder, which is a great uh, publication, talks a lot about AI and stuff. Uh, Matthias Bastian, he is a journalist over there and he was talking about one of his experiences. Essentially what he did when he was trying it out um, was he got the Talk with Donald 2024 GPT, which I guess is like someone uploaded all of Donald Trump's scripts and speeches and uh, a bunch of like stuff about him. I'm assuming like maybe his campaign website. I don't know. And anyways, they, they created this like Donald Trump one. And then they also created one um, which was called Biden Simulator. And uh, so I, actually, I think he's just testing these out, but someone has created a Biden simulator, which is essentially simulating Biden. And I'm not sure exactly what data goes into either of these, um, but it's kind of it's kind of funny just seeing how they do. So essentially, he had it. He had Donald Trump and Joe Biden giving like a little conversation between each other by calling both of these things. So I'll read you some snippets from this because I think it's funny. But then let's talk about some bigger implications of this. So. Uh, he did at symbol talk with Bi Donald 2024 and he said, hey, Donald, good to speak with you. What do you think about Joe Biden? And it said, good to speak with you too, Joe Biden. Let me tell you, he's a disaster for this country, the worst. You look at the economy, the border, international relations, it's all a mess, total lack of leadership. We need strength, we need results. Uh, not whatever Joe Biden's been doing, it's just sad. And then he said, you're being rude. And he said, look, I'm just telling like it is. People are tired of the political correctness. We need to address the real issues and get things done. That's what I'm talking about. Results, not just words. And then, okay, so of course, whatever, funny, sounds probably like something Donald Trump would say. Then he brings in the Biden simulator. He says, what's your position on that, Joe? And, and you know, he tagged the Biden simulator thing. It says, uh, well, you know, I think it's kind of like when you go to the store to buy a pair of socks and you find out they only have Argyle. Not what you were looking for, but hey, it keeps your toes warm just the same, right? And speaking of toes, did I ever tell you about the time my cousin and I tried to build a raft out of old soda bottles? It was back in Scranton a long time ago, and we thought we were Huck and Finn and Tom Sawyer, or maybe it was the other way around. Anyways, the point is, things don't always go as planned, but you gotta roll with the punches, keep your feet dry, and always remember to recycle those soda bottles. Yep, that's the key. Okay, anyways, <laughs> I think this is kind of funny from Donald Trump and Joe Biden on this, but, um, so... You know, he, he asked them about, so like that was kind of like a funny thing. Then he asked them um, to like quote each other and, and cite their quotes and do a bunch of different funny things. Okay, the point being, um, we now can make these things talk to each other. These different GPTs talk to each other and there's a whole bunch of really interesting GPTs. So I'm really excited. I think there's gonna be a lot of um, really incredible use cases here. Um, so something else I wanted to bring up though was talking about all of this, Sam Altman was recently on a podcast with Bill Gates um, and he said that, quote, customability and personalization essentially are key in terms of what OpenAI is 
development roadmap is, what they're really trying to do here. And he's, um, he said, quote, people want very different things out of GPT-4, different styles, different sets of assumptions. We'll make all of that possible. Then, and then also the ability to have it use your own data, the ability to know about you, your email, your calendar, how you like appointments booked, those will be some of the most important areas of improvement. So I think this is so fascinating. GPT-4 is, and, and probably five is what they're looking at now, but the GPT store is focusing not just on, you know, creating these AI tools, but essentially being integrated into everything that you do, everything that you're working on, and really making your life a lot easier with AI in a way we haven't seen before. So this is absolutely fascinating. The last thing I wanted to touch on, because I know there's a bunch of controversy about this, is in regards to the political chatbots on the GPT store. So I know I gave some examples of Donald Trump and Joe Biden in a chatbot. Um, I think according to uh, so according to the people that actually made that, the Trump one was trained on Trump's book speeches and debates. Um, and what's interesting is OpenAI technically has a policy against political GPTs. Um, and I think that they usually, they recently, so it's the idea is they're trying to like ban the use of their technology for political propaganda. That's the concept of it. But, um, What's interesting is someone else made a political chat bot from Dean Phillips. So he's a Democratic candidate. Um, and they essentially used OpenAI's GPT to, to, to create this chat bot. And it was actually banned by OpenAI because of the rules of that. So it's interesting that Dean Phillips got banned, but Donald Trump and Joe Biden's haven't got banned. I don't know what, where it's at. I think um, Matthias Bastian, who wrote that whole article, reached out to, for, to them for comment about it and they didn't hear back from them. So anyways, I think it's really interesting. Um, regardless, I think OpenAI does get a lot of criticism about tr political stuff and being pro this candidate or that candidate or this ideology or that ideology. And there's a, there's a lot that goes into that. But regardless, um, I think this is kind of a funny example. I think there's a lot of more exciting examples. So talking about actual use cases that I think will be amazing for this. Imagine that you're working on a specific project, right? So let's say you're creating like a pitch deck for your company and you're working on something. You can chat with ChatGPT to get like ideas, be like, hey, act like a professional pitch deck creator, have a business that does X, Y, and Z. You give it like one line. What, you know, what slides need to be on my pitch deck? It'll give you the slides. You're like, okay, awesome. Like what are the concepts? It gives you concepts, right? This is all stuff you do with ChatGPT. Then you're like, hey, at Canva, create like a logo I can use for my company or you know with one of these logo creator ones there's a whole bunch of logo creator ones so then it goes and creates a logo for you then the next thing you do is say hey at canva like create a um you know create like a pr uh, a pitch deck and embed this logo in the pitch deck and make the first slide about x y and z and then you're like hey um you know at number one sales gpt what's like the best way i can pitch my product for x y and z reasons and then hey, like vid.io, which is a video one, like help me create a video that's gonna showcase a demo of my product, right? So like you're talking with all of these different things within the same chat function, you're able to call all of these different GPTs, all of these different tools and create some really powerful stuff um, that you're kind of actively working on. So I'm really excited to see where this goes. I think there's a lot of possibilities here. Um, and so I'll definitely keep you updated on everything that happens with this new chat functionality, what I'm seeing, what people are using it for and some of the best use cases. I'll bring all of that to you in the coming episodes.